So quick introduction for myself. Um, I'm Zersi, I'm an AMC officer. I've been in the uni for about three years now. Uh, one of the things I've been doing occasionally is running, well, not running incursion fleets, but participating in incursion fleets, which is like two different things. But uh, for the class, you don't need to be out in space. There's no practical element. So uh, please dock up. We are at war. So if you're a uni character, you may get uh, destroyed if you're not paying attention. Uh, if you haven't done so already, then just make sure you're on push to talk in Mumble so we don't get any feedback from the uh, unintended noises in the background. And if you haven't already done so, then please be in lecture.euni channel in the game. I will be covering uh, how we run incursion fleets in EUni specifically, so I won't be covering uh, all aspects of incursions, but it's a good route into our incursion fleets, um, at least. And you may ask a question that I don't know the answer to. Uh, I can see from who's in the class that we have several experienced people in there. So if I don't know the answer, then probably they will. So uh, we'll see who can answer what. So on slide three now. Uh, so we have what are incursions? Uh, so the law behind incursions is really around um, uh, their equivalent of zombies for Eve. So uh, the concept is that um, the head of the Sancho nation has been abducting various people, clones and humans, and converting them into zombies, which then do this bidding and invade space uh, in the form of uh, an incursion. I kind of termed it for people who um, New to Eve, but I've played other games. Um, it's it's kind of like a Eve's version of a raid. It's not precisely there's no boss really in incursions, but you do need multiple pilots, so uh, it's not a solo activity. Uh, so you will need at least um, a few people, depending on which type of site you run, and different modes within that beat as well. So um, you do need a mixture of damage dealers and logi, which is uh, Eve's version of healers. Uh, they are temporary in nature, so they spawn and despawn throughout known space. Um, they do form in all security spaces. Uh, we typically run high sec. Um, I'm not really aware of communities that run in low or null due to the likelihood of getting PvP'd in them, but um, I guess they may be out there. Uh, if you have traveled through an incursion, constellation, then you will see a whole load of stuff in the top left corner of your uh, screen, which has a list of um, penalties if you start to hover over some of them. For example, if you're ratting um, running combat sites, then you'll get reduced bounties. So there are various reasons not to do certain activities in constellations which are currently under an incursion. Probably the most notable is that uh, mining, for example, the belt rats are converted into Sancho rats, which are far more powerful than the average belt rats, and you're probably going to lose your mining ship if you're, if you're mining in incursions. So that's one thing definitely not. There is um, a couple of videos on YouTube that CCP have put up. I'll just link the, the main background one that they've posted, which is a couple of years old now. But it's quite interesting to look at, and as with all CCP videos, they're quite cool to just look at and read. Um, I would open it up now because you'll get a lot of noise from that, so something to do after the class, hopefully. And one of the reasons why I'm running this class is because various changes, recent changes in that CPCP have made to Alpha Clone states enable those guys to run incursions. So we'll cover those kind of basic bits and they can run as part of the class as well. But uh, that's a major change for Alpha Clones. And it could be viable now, for example, for an Alpha Clone to probably start to build up enough of this could start flexing their account if they want to via incursions. On to slide four now. So EUN incursion fleets. Um, we mostly run Vanguard sites in high security space. Um, we have run Assault level sites occasionally with in collaboration with uh, another community, but uh, the vast majority of the adverts you see 
uh, our Vanguard sites, and you tend to get special notice of anything different to that via the Slack or mailing list, etc. But um, but Vanguard sites in high security space, we don't run in low or null, and as a EMU by ourselves, we don't run assaults. Although essentially, with enough pilots consistently, then that could be something we could achieve at some point. So a typical fleet composition of an EU new fleet will consist of eight damage dealers, which will normally be battleships. If you are uh, an experienced Omega clone, we do accept T3Cs, but that's probably on a case-by-case -case basis. There are no uh, fittings on our Vanguard incursion wiki for T3Cs, but um, it's really up to you to negotiate and do that with the fleet commander who's running that fleet at the time. Now, there are two logistic ships. You have to have at least two. Uh, sometimes, if we have a brand new logi who's not piloted that before, then we can run the three logis, really as a, a spare one being a backup. We also have a long grid booster. We provide boosting uh, benefits to the holder of the fleet, uh, which makes the fleet more efficient, which is a key element of incursions. And then we also have two off-grid rows. So one is a scout, which is slightly different to potentially other um, roles you've heard for that name. So a scout in incursions is a specific role, which I'll come on to later, but uh, it's slightly different to scouting in a PvP fleet, for example, and on something like an AMC shared camp. Now, the picket is probably much more like you've heard a scout row. Uh, I'll come on to that one as well. Uh, but both those scout and picket roles can be performed by alpha clones as well without having to go to the expense of a battleship. So um, alpha clones cannot perform, unfortunately, the logistics or the booster roles at the moment because they require tech two ships, which is a constraint for Omega clones only. But they can picket, scout, and deal damage. Uh, typically, this is and not always the case, but uh, we tend to run fleets starting at 1900 around eve time in the EU and around midnight eve time in the US. But with the West Coast and East Coast, that could vary in in the US time zone in particular. And in the EU, we have also daylight saving, etc., which may move that around slightly. But uh, if you're looking to either start a fleet or looking for a fleet that's already started, Forming, then those are probably the best times to look at the in game channel to see if anything's happening. Uh, we do also accept alts and alumni. So if you left the uni or want to leave the uni, uh, then we do accept people who have access to uh, the incursion channel in game, which is either alts of the uni or alumni. Um, we don't accept People have never been in uni, for example. So uh, that's the only constraint. Um, some people like to run alts because of the war deck that the uni is under. Um, and some people come back because they like the nature of the uni fleets, which are fairly relaxed. Or they've got uh, friends who they run with in the uni that they still want to keep in touch with. Uh, the main objective for EU uni fleets in particular is to learn and teach. So. Um, in incursion communities in the public domain, you will see a lot of focus on efficiency. So they'll be expecting you to have optimum fits, um, which involves sometimes expensive modules. And you'd be expected to align and follow fleet commands uh, really easily. There's a bit more leeway and relaxed nature in new fleets. So um, if you jumped from EUNI into other public community fleets, you may see a real difference in the atmosphere and the aspect of efficiency on there. That's so side five, this is the first of our rows. So a quick synopsis of this road is that anyone can perform this road if they can talk on Mumble. That is the one key requirement. If you can't talk on Mumble, but you want a key into chat, it's not very efficient to warn fleet or war targets if you're only typing. So you must be able to talk on Mumble. But other than that, uh, you, any ship will suffice. Um, we have had people doing it in shuttles. You can even be docked up in system. You don't have to be out in space at all, but we do prefer 
our pickets to be watching the, the closest gate into where the incursion features land. And the reason for pickets with EUNI is that we are obviously pretty much constantly at war. Um, so at the moment we are at war with Pirate. Uh, if you're in uh, a Mars space, you may sort of come across uh, Pirate um, war targets randomly. I think we did have a loss last month from someone who's moving their ship to Pirate. They did take one out as well, but uh, but we do do pickets, which is unique to EU as well. So you won't see pickets in, in public fleets because um, of the various corporations involved. And you may find if you're trying to exit and join a public community, they may not accept you if you're EU because of the the war, tar uh, the war targets. They don't want to lose people on grid, particularly if you're lodgy to war targets that they've got, which puts the rest of the fleet at risk. Uh, we do like our pickets to watch out for gank fleets as well, so code, etc. Um, typically come in if they see a particularly blingy battleship, may try to gank that either with large numbers of destroyers or some battle cruisers, and their objective is to kill that person, get the loot, and get out. Um, and it can be cost effective for them to do that if there's a particularly uh, expensive ship that they're looking for. So. Uh, we do expect our pickets as well to warn us if there's a large number of hurricanes entering the system, for example, or catalysts, etc. Um, so we do pay that person. So the main income for incursions is via the sites that we run. But uh, if you're on an off-grid uh, role, then you get rewarded by the rest of the fleet. That's on-grid getting paid for the running incursions. So. For full hour, if the fleet is running fairly efficiently, then you just expect to earn about 30 to 35 million risk per hour if you pick it. Uh, and that's really just for keeping an eye on local, um, a warning of fleet if anything suspicious happens, or in particular, any more targets walking. So it's a fairly easy road, but quite well rewarded. Uh, if we don't have a picket, then the fleet won't run because of the, the, the war targets and the wars that we have. So if there's no pickets joining the fleet, then no matter how many more advanced ships we have, we won't risk undocking and giving uh, our war targets trying to kill those. Now, Simone's made a good point in the lecture channel there that uh, in particular, we don't want to move our battleships and lodgy ships or boosters uh, with our uni couches. We're probably going to go through choke points like Yaja or Yadama, typically war targets will be found in those systems, particularly for the nature. So uh, we do have a valet alt form as well. So if you can't move your battleship on a non-uni counter, then someone may help you out if you advertise for a valet. Other than that, um, yes, you should really train up on a valet alt who can at least move that ship for you. They don't have to fly it on grid, but if they can at least move it and get it safe, safely to uh, the target systems that we would be moving to, then um, that's the optimal approach. Uh, slide six covers scouts. Um, so scouts are also available for alpha clones. You do need some skill in hacking, which is data um, analyzers. And we prefer you to be able to use a mic walk drive as well, which requires some minimal training in navigation, etc., to be able to use those. Uh, it's slightly more interesting than the picket rope. So what you're doing is you're walking to the um, sites that we're running, which are normally you can see in the overview, and you're descanning those for other fleets who are already in those or on their way to those. Um, there is a concept in incursions called competition. And competition is where you've got multiple fleets in the single site who are both at, uh, killing the rats. And the winners, in effect, are the ones who don't get the most armor damage to uh, the incursion rats. So if one fleet is particularly uh, stronger than the other, then they will actively compete essentially against other fleets to run them off grid, keep their sites or systems themselves. 
um, or it may be that they come in and see a week of fleets and just decide to kind of take it over just because they can. Again, this is another paid row from the on grid fleet members. And again, you should probably earn the same as I will earn the same as the picket row, which is about 30 to 35 million if you're running for the full hour. Uh, it is possible to run this one of fleet without a scout. Um, they're typically used in one of the types of sites that we run on incursion, in Vanguard incursions. Um, we can run those, even those sites without a scout, but we tend to avoid those from efficiency perspective and run the other two types of sites. But, um, it is useful to have. Slide seven is when we get into the more interesting rules that most people want to fly. So damage dealers, it's slightly more complicated than just if you've done solar ratting or even L4 missions, you just kind of shoot things. But uh, but in incursions, there is a slightly more mechanical way to do things. Uh, all, all our ships will be fitted with webs. And that's to slow down the smaller incursion rats to make them easier to apply damage to. There is a specific on-grid role called a damage a drone bunny. So everyone who's dealing damage will be asked to uh, release their drones and assign those to a specific person who uh, DDDs up in the fleet channel. And that's to optimize the damage dealt by drones. Um, so that drone bunny will actually work contrary to the, the fleet commands, commander's order of shooting to ensure that the drones didn't spend too much time traveling from target to target. Uh, everyone also carries backup logistics drones as well. So if a Lodgy were to, at worst case, be blown up for whatever reason, or in the probably more commonly what happen is just get disconnected, then the damage dealers will actually all act as an emergency Lodgy. So they're abandoned their damage dealing drones, um, launch their logistics drones and set those on the backup on the existing Lodgy that we have to keep them up just in case uh, they get targeted by the incursion rats. And hopefully that other logic will reconnect. Um, and otherwise, if that ultimately, if we down to one logic, then we'll extract from that site as soon as we can and get it once if. Um, you do need to pay attention as well, so you're not randomly shooting the rats on grid. Uh, the fleet commander will be call, calling specific types of rats to shoot, and there will be a tagging system as well. So if you're not familiar with tagging, uh, that's available on your overview, and uh, the tagger will allocate a numerical sequence or a numer an alpha sequence to the order of rats to kill. And again, that's from an efficiency perspective, so everyone shoots the same target, uh, killing that quickly, and rather than just spread DPS throughout the incursion, that's so uh, you do need to pay attention, listen to fleet commander, you will the line. Etc. Etc. So it's not just a, as easy as it probably sounds. Uh, logistics. So uh, we typically have two shield repairing logistics on feet. Um, so those are normally scimitars. And you do need to move around and pay much more attention on logistics than you do for damage dealing. So you're looking out for the rest of the fleet. You're repairing the shield damage that they get from the rats, which they will need to be done. Uh, the damage dealers can't survive that long taking damage from that rips. But you do need to orbit the fleet as a tech 2 cruiser, then you're more susceptible to damage. You have less tanks than the battleships. So the reason why you orbit is to reduce the incoming damage from the vessel. Our logistics ships sometimes also run remote sensor boosts and capital capacity transfers. So certain types of damage dealers will receive help from the logistics in other forms, not just the pairs. So that might be help with tracking or range, depending on what type of ships are on grid. Uh, nightmares, for example, are quite cap hungry. So you may find a logistics, logistics ship uh, helping out to nightmare with capacitor. On one of our sites as well in Vanguard, there is what's called your drop. Um, so there's a mining based site that we run where you end the site by dropping some ore 
in a can once all the rats are dead. And that's a logistics ship because they're smaller and faster than the, uh, the damage dealers. Uh, for both damage dealers and logistics, I've uh, well, copied and pasted a picture of the wiki, which shows a typical training uh, plan for both those roles. So you can see the difference. Damage dealers have about 52 and a half days of training. Logistics, 72 days. That's mainly the additional of the repairs and the tech to uh, cruiser ships. Onto slide nine, so the booster. Um, we have one of these on, in the fleet at one time. Um, I guess if there are multiple boosters available and we're short on or have spaces for DPS, you could, could conceivably have multiple boosting ships, but only one will act as a booster at uh, any one time. Um, they basically act as damage dealers, but they do also have high slot boosting modules in there on the footage of their ships as well, so if you check those at certain points. Um, to benefit the rest of the fleet. Uh, they fly command ship, which is a Tech 2 battle cruiser. Uh, most of our shield fits for logistics and boosters prefer the Minimatar, so this is Slipnia. And they're probably going to be the Drone Bunny as well, because it has one of the shortest ranges. So that accounts for people's variations in uh, drone navigation skills and how far they can control their drones. And as you can see, uh, the booster rule is the longest out of all of them by quite some way. So we're looking at 195 and a half days to get into a boosting ship with maximum skills. Think of the fleets where really desperate they might take a, a suboptimal boosting if they have no alternative, not on the ship or the tank, but maybe on the support skills. But, uh, Again, that would be a fleet commander's decision to take that or not, and we probably would get dropped by um, if another booster came along with better skills. So, border cast is a, a value alt for boosters. Um, probably, well, people tend to advertise their valets for. But the ships, but um, possibly yes, but they are slightly easier to move than uh, than battle cruisers from a if you're not well, from a holding perspective that is as a smaller. So slide ten, how do you get involved in the community? Um, so we have a mailing list which is essential uh, when we move to a new focus, which is what the incursions are called. Then a mail goes out to the incursion mailing list telling them where to move to, which station to dock up in, and with the usual reminders on not moving battleships or other ships in Union captures. But uh, you must be part of the mailing list. Uh, otherwise, if you're reacting to the adverts that are getting the incursion channel, then you're going to be moving reactively rather than proactively. Uh, there is an in game channel as well called. Incursion stopped at EUNI. I'll just think that. Might be to it. So you also need to be in that as well. When we do form a fleet, the adverts will be run from there and exiting up for well, that fleet will be managed via that channel. So uh, you won't be able to get into the fleet without being in that channel. Uh, you do need to link your fit as you exit up as well, uh, just to make sure that the FC sees what you've got, what you're running, and you've got sufficient tank modules, etc., to be able to survive in the, in the incursion. Uh, unlike other EUNI channels, uh, it is open to alts and alumni, so as long as you've got the password from previously being in the uni, then you can get into that channel. There's also a Slack community for incursions. That's useful for what we call pings. So if you're not used Slack before, then it's um, a web-based chat tool. Uh, 
pings is kind of a alert that goes out saying someone's formed the defeat. Um, so if you're not in game, it's a good way of attaching your phone to that Slack channel and getting alerts on your phone to someone pinging that channel. And you can log into the game and uh, exit. Uh, if you look down the Mumble channel, you will see Mumble uh, further down for incursions. Uh, if you're running in the fleet, you must be on Mumble. Uh, you won't be a part of the fleet if you can't sign into Mumble. So don't expect to be able to, to kind of just follow the feet sort of randomly without being a mumble. You don't necessarily have to talk if you're a damage dealer, but um, it does help if you can. And unlike the other channels, you typically find that it's not occupied unless there's actual fleet running. So um, people don't lurk in mumble, they tend to be part of other campuses or outside of the uni and just form up for and join that channel just for uh, uh, specific actions. At the forum, again, the forum is accessible for alumni as part of the public uh, uni area of the forums, so it can be accessible by anyone. Um, it's not essential, but it is useful to see any discussions, debates, requests, etc. We talk about Valley Alts. Um, there's also sometimes questions there on fittings, uh, skills, work, and stuff. So it's useful to be in, but not essential. Uh, last slide is really just some links to further reading. If you're interested in the types of fits, fits that we want, then I'll link to um, the various fits from the wiki. Uh, I do think the wiki is really good that we've got for EUNI for our incursions, both generally for incursions and specifically for our Vanguard sites. Uh, Cassio, who's the incursion community manager, does a really good job of keeping it really comprehensive and really up to date. So uh, those fits are currently um, suitable for alphas and also omegas. Uh, so those are minimum fits to get in with recommendations to how to progress as well on those. You can see Matt linking the actual fits themselves you just see in game as well. Our next link is more information on the rules. So I've not covered in depth the rules that we do. So there are waitlist manager, doom bunnies in more detail as well. So uh, that's also worth a read to know what we actually do on grid as well. And the last link I've posted is another YouTube video and that's by uh, Seamus, uh, who's one of our more famous lecturers in EUNI. So he does uh, lectures on anything and everything. You'll probably see the game mechanics uh, adverts quite frequently. But uh, one of the things Seamus does, has done is recorded um, uh, an, a EUNI fleet running in an incursion. Uh, the interface is a bit dated in terms of the ship icons, etc. But the concept is pretty much the same. And it does give you a good idea of what to expect on grid. Uh, so you walk to a beacon. You get towed to slide debate, shoot the stuff inside, align to something else, etc. So, um, if nothing else, it gives you a good view of uh, how it would be on grid rather. Uh, the last thing I'd just mention as well is probably how to start. So, what I did when I first got into incursions was join as a picket and progress onto scouts and then eventually got onto, on grid. So, if nothing else, pickets and scouts do get a good view of, I guess, the terminology being used, how a fleet runs, even if they're not on grid. So it's a good way just to get involved to see if you like the sound of it. Um, the shares that you get of the rewards and the bounties is enough. If you do it long enough, then it can pay for the ships that you're flying on grid as well. So it is possible, I think, to pretty much be self-sufficient in creation without getting income externally to actually self-fund from being a picket and being a scout to get on good. So that's the end of the slides I've got. Is there any other questions?
Okay, so Sontaro asks how much is one of those fit, beginner fits for? Bill right now, a little under. That's yeah. if you get the faction, that's if you get the double faction uh, webs. I think, it, I think it's significantly less, Matt. Back in my day. Yeah, one thing you can do is you can um, click on one of Matt's links and simulate fitting and it's very approximate, but it gives you an approximate price in the bottom right-hand corner of the fitting window. Now, the other thing you can do is copy and paste that fitting into uh, either basement, for example, uh, which gives yeah. you a, a price as well. This is Simone. I'm seeing the Hyperion fit is something like 302 million. Hyperion prices are through the floor. No, I'm thinking pirates. I don't know why. Yeah, so very roughly speaking, if you did a couple of weeks of picketing and, and scouting, then you're probably going to be quite close to getting enough of this into a bad ship. Again, this is Simone. If, you're, if money's a problem, start picketing. And once you know the community, you could post into the incursions forum, does anyone have you know, a T1 battleship? And a lot of times people upgrade and look to sell their T1 battleship at a very reduced price. Or get too sentimental, but load it out anyway. Yeah, I shall link, uh, well, the... Uh, so that may look like the channel link again, but that's actual main list name as well. So incursions.etacuni is the main list to join as well. Okay, I'm just looking at a wind's request there, but uh, not quite understanding that one. Can you copy and copy the fit and paste. Oh, you can. Okay, it's not a it's a statement of the question. Okay, John asks how to form a fleet. So anyone can form a fleet. Uh, a particular reluctance with fleet forming is the it typically, people can assume that person is also going to FC the fleet, which may be something that person is not comfortable with. But um, anyone can form a fleet, and once it's formed, you can ask um, for an FC, and sometimes, somewhat reluctantly, someone normally steps forward and agrees to FC the fleet. So um, those two things are separate. So uh, one of the things we potentially do suffer from is just a general reluctance to start forming a fleet. But you will find typically in the incursion channel that someone will announce that they're starting a fleet and post an advert. Um, something like that, uh, which is a typical fleet advert for forming. When people start Xing up and providing their fits and what rules they're going to perform. And typically you see something like this, which is a kind of partial fleet full or fleet filled, and they'll be, they'll be advertising what they start to need. So for example, on here we've got need a booster and a picket. Um, so particularly in the EU, EU, I would encourage people to get involved. Um, we quite often need people to take the step of forming the fleet. I think it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. People tend not to move, the, move their ships if they don't think a fleet will form, and therefore no one tries to form a fleet. So I think the more attempts we get at forming a fleet, it encourages more people to fly and move their ships, and the more likely a fleet will be to form. If you are forming a fleet up, you do you are expected really to be able to vet the fits, is the only thing I would add. So uh, uh, what you're looking for is if people have not got the right tank, it's not quite as simple as just making sure someone's got the fittings from the uh, from the wiki. Some people will put alternative fits on, 
So we do need a basic level of knowledge to understand how that person fits in a tank to survive. Um, so we do need to do a bit, a little bit of reading up on that. What you don't want to do is hand over a fleet to an FC that's not had the, the fittings checked and then people start to die. So yeah, Carol's put a uh, one example of uh, don't just accept anything that exists up. You can check those fits if you're forming the fleet. Okay, um, that's everything I've covered. Uh, like I say, there's a, this isn't hasn't been an incursion 101, which would cover things in a lot more detail. But I think it's a good. I hope it's a good start to get people interested in voting incursions. And the more people uh, we get involved, then the more fleets will run, and the more risk everyone will make, and the more fun hopefully. I'll do a last call for questions. I think Zaku, you were keying up, but couldn't hear anything if you were asking a question. Sorry, I joined a bit late. Did you talk about external organisations other than uni doing um, incursions such as TVP, Warp to Me, those sorts of orgs? No, so I've actually made this specific to the uni fleets just to get some, I guess, interest in most in our fleets. So yeah, I've not covered, just really excluded uh, all the external communities that I did mention. There's probably a different attitude and a different expectation with those. External yeah, communities. yeah, they're, they're all true. boring, and you have to be unwar decked pretty much to fire them. So, no, but it is still worth mentioning to people that um, there are organisations that, that do just specifically incursions. Mostly, it's players who just want to make isk for other means. Um, you won't be able to use your uni tune on them because your tune is likely going to be war decked. But um, and yeah, some people find them boring, but some people quite enjoy just putting music on and going through them. That said, they have quite a high skill requirement and the ships are normally quite expensive. I mean, I think the cheapest ships are about 600 million ISK because they run them as a uh, as an ISK generating exercise. So you're expected to be very, very efficient. Mm, but the, you, can, you can bring tech one hulls. Uh, they normally expect you to upgrade pretty soon. Though. Yeah, it depends on the org. But yeah, um, uni ones are generally much more fun. Yeah, you do find, for example, some FCs will not be that patient and just walk the fleet off. And if you have recorded your drones, example, then uh, walk them off, walk you off without them in a fleet walk. Uh, actually, got a couple more questions. So, Homies asks, is it okay to travel in Alpha Valley in Adult Into the Count? Um, so, if that alt can move the ship, then why not? I think John's, with his kind of questions, is making the point really around what's called a travel fit. So, if you've got a particularly blingy fit, it's not that great an idea to just move that ship with that particular fitting around space with gankers around. So um, it's best to swap out things like faction webs for extra tank modules um, just to make your ship that harder to gank. But um, in terms of the answer, uh, yes, as long as you've sensibly tanked for, for moving that ship, then now we can move that ship for you. Uh, Essek asks I was also going to say um, some of some people who do incursions, including myself, uh, who mostly do them for fun with various different groups, um, don't uh, fly or haul our ships across. We have someone else do it for us. Um, there are uh, organisations dedicated to hauling fit ships, so um, you can always put them up on a hauling or career contract, but it tends to be quite expensive. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, yeah, you can always pay for someone to haul your ship for you. Rather, that's it, it's depending on who you use. It can be expensive though. But if you're making money from impressions and it kind of makes up for it, it's up to you. That, that choice is yours. It is also worth mentioning that um, uh, you can also often buy incursion fit ships near incursion systems. So one of the things that I do on an alternate character is I haul pre-fit ships down because a lot of people will just fly over in a shuttle and then buy a ship there to do the incursions. Okay, so this is Simone. As a uni member, I wouldn't fly in any fleet that would accept a uni member, because uni is constantly at war. 
yeah, with external organisations would be unlikely to want to take a EUNI member with them. So yeah, uh, but certainly the EUNI fleets are, are quite good, and we don't mind the fact that we're war decked. That's why we have a picket. Sorry, um, let me pass it back because I'm hogging the conversation from the actual lecturer. Okay, so I'm sorry. Um, Esther has asked, he was looking at the fits and it seemed everything's focused. Um, is this the case with every incursion fleet? Um, well, there's a good reason why we use turret based so projectile weapons or hybrids is because of the efficiency, again, with the damage application. So if you're using missiles, for example, then they take time to fly. So particularly if you're competing, if you're up against a fleet with laser boats, hybrids and projectiles, then they're going to land that damage faster than your missiles will land and probably kill that target before you even hit it. So yes, you will see a common theme of uh, no missiles um, included. So uh, yeah, if you're looking at running some of the Kaldari missile ships, then yeah, typically those are considered suboptimal and wouldn't get accepted. That said, you can get them to work. It takes way more skills and time than it's worth, and you'd be better off training into guns. So it'll take you less time to train into guns to an acceptable level than it would be to get missiles to an acceptable level, even if you have near perfect missile skills. If your missile skills are perfect, then we'll talk later. But as far as it goes, it doesn't take long to get turrets to the same level of efficiency as missiles. So for Ty's question, which is a bit more fundamental, I assume you probably missed the start of the lecture. So I'll do a shortcut of uh, read that wiki. Uh, does he mean from a lore standpoint, or does he just mean in general? He means it's an ISK printing machine where money falls out of the sky and into your pocket so fast you can't possibly spend it all. Yeah, but the lore stuff behind it's pretty cool. Or oh, Ouroboros and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so, um, so Ty, yeah, so I guess probably the best answer is you need a fleet full of, you must have a fleet, really, there. We're talking about eight damage dealers, a booster, and logistics. Um, most DD sites, you can probably run solo, depending on your skills or a couple of people, but uh, from a difficulty perspective, it's high end, it's called high end PVE, so um, you will need. Minimal skills that you can see on our wiki. We will need a battleship and we will need a fleet of similar people. So uh, that's probably the main difference between DD sites. Um, there's no loot as such is probably a big difference as well. So you don't, you're not looting the wrecks. You basically kill the rats inside. Any other actions you need to complete the site and you get almost like a bounty paid to you per site like the one. So um, there's no salvaging the directs, so you provide basic T1 salvage. So you basically do a site, align to the next one, and you're getting paid per site every time you do one. So uh, it's slightly different to um, to D, D sites from that perspective. And you also get Concord loyalty points as well, which are valuable in the might as well. So that's another kind of side ISK maker that you can sell or trade in your Concord points for either items to sell, or there will be players out there who will effectively buy your multi points for you, which effectively is a way of them, if you buy a particular module that they want, then they'll reimburse you for the multi points that's spent on that item for you. Okay, I think I've got the 45 minute timing about right from that. Any other questions? Misty Fleet Sites okay, 1. If not, then thank you for attending and I'll close the class there. You Misty Fleet Sites 1. Oh, for what? Oh, Essex again. Uh, is the fleet limited in size? You specify exact numbers, so I'm assuming so. Um, yes, actually. Um, you can't. There's no point in taking more than a full squad in from a reward perspective. Only a certain number of pilots get paid. Yeah. Um, and yeah, apart from anything else, um, you do need a minimum number, but there's a maximum number as well, which is effectively a full squad. So in high sec, that minimum number is six, and not 
and the maximum number is 10. But with 11 pilots, you actually run fast enough to make up for the slightly reduced payout. And then in low and null, it's a bit different, but not too terribly different. And it's the same way in uh, assaults and headquarters. So you have a minimum required to get payout and a maximum that can get payout. Uh, one should have mentioned before I dismissed that, I start to do the, the feedback form, you can fill it out, and that would be good as well. See what I can improve for next time. But I do plan on rerunning this class probably fairly regularly, once a month, probably. Uh, just to keep new uni members informed about the encouragement community.